As you recall in the Access Level 1 training video, we created our relationships between our tables by coming up here, clicking on the Database Tools tab, and opening up the Relationship window. The only other place that you can create a relationship outside of that window is within a query, but it's known as a join, and it's temporary, not permanent. So, for example, I've got my two tables here, Book Project, which keeps track of all the books that we've manufactured, and my Book Sales table keeps track of all the manufactured books that we've sold. And down below in the grid, I've added two fields from the Book Project table and these two from the Book Sales. You can see I don't have a relationship between the two tables, so what I can do is I can create a temporary one or a join. If I don't create one here and I try to view the data, it'll give me bogus results. For example, Book Project, Book Sales. How many records do I have in my Book Project table? A total of 25. How many in my book sales? 82. So between the two, a total of 107. When I go back to my query, without that join, when I go ahead and run it, come up here, click on the Design tab again, go back to Run. How many records do I have? Wow, 2050. There's the first red flag. The second is over here with the order ID. This field is a unique field. It's got the primary key assigned to it, so it should not be duplicating 11111. Come back up here to the book sales table. You can see the example here, that's unique to this transaction, two is unique to that transaction, three and so on. So back to my query, the reason why it's doing this again is because without a relationship, or in this case a join, Access doesn't know which records are associated with which. So what it does as a solution, it combines every record in one table with every record in the second table. And that's not going to work for us, so let's go ahead and right click and go to the design view and create that join. Now in order to create a relationship as we learned in uh, Access Level 1, we're going to have the field in one table, the primary key, linked to the foreign key field in another table. And you can see I've got part number here that I'm going to join up to the part number field over in the book sales. Now again, they don't have to have the exact same name. I like to keep them similar or having the exact same name so I know what I'm linking up to. But they do have to have the same data type. So for example, right click on the book project table, go to design. The primary key field here, the part number, has the data type text, and then right click the book sales, go to design, and it better have the same data type for that foreign key field in this table, and it does, text. So back to my query, I can just go ahead and click and drag, and hover over the part number as I'm dragging this part number over to that one, and let go, and it creates the join. It doesn't bring up the window that says, okay, do you want to enforce referential integrity, because again, this is temporary, only being applied to this query. Now there are two different types of joins. There's an inner join and an outer join. To learn more about this, you can go ahead and right click on that uh, line between the two and click on join properties. And you got a total of three, but there are two different types. The first one is an inner join, the last two are outer joins. Now I don't know why Access doesn't call it an inner join and these two outer joins, but in any case, see if this makes sense. The first one, an inner join, only include rows where the join fields from both tables are equal. So if I click and drag this down, only include those records from both tables where these join fields are equal or matching. Let me see if I can explain this graphically by opening up my PowerPoint presentation. So I've got two tables here, and the inner join only wants to pull in those records where those two fields are matching. So it doesn't pull in necessarily all of table A or all of table B, just where it matches between those two join fields. And then the other type is an outer join. And as you recall, we had an outer join 2 and 3. Well, 2 means that you can pull in all records from one table and only those that match in between the linked fields, or you can do it from all of table B, and where it only relates between those two fields or match in table A. So let me go back to my database here. And there we go. Include all records from the book project table, or include all records from the book sales table, and then, of course, after only those records from the other table where the join fields are equal. So let me go back to number one, click OK and show it to you. Let's click on the View button. Whoops, it doesn't like it when I have other tables open that this query is based upon, so we'll go ahead and right click on those tables and close out, okay? And then go ahead and click on the View button, and there we go. Have a total of 82 records. I mean, coincidentally, it's the same number that we had in our book sales table here doesn't mean that every book that we produced or manufactured in the book project table is being sold. So for example, we've got the book title here with different order IDs. That's been sold quite a bit. So again, only where those two fields are matching. So we have the part number, the book that we manufactured in the book project table, and in the book sales table, it's actually been entered here, so it's matching, so that's why it's pulling. So let's go back to the design view and change this with the right click, join properties. Let's go to include all the records in the book project table and only those records where the join fields are equal. Click OK. 
Let's go ahead and click on the Run button, and there we go. It included every single book, even those that haven't been sold yet. And you can tell because we don't have an order ID for some of these books, including the amount sold. So we haven't sold Working From Your Home Using Your Computer. I guess that's not popular. Let me go back to my Design View. Go ahead and right-click it. Open up the uh, Properties, and you can select number 3, click OK. And you can see that it's pointing in the other direction, the arrow, meaning include everything here and then only those that match over here where it's pointing to. Click on the Run button. How many records? Total of 82. I mean, when it's including everything in the sales and matching only those records in the project, it's not going to pull in those that haven't been sold, so we're back here to 82. Okay, one last example I want to show you. Let me go ahead and close out of here and be sure to save my work. Is let me go ahead and double-click and open up the customer's name. Now, if you get this error, the query must have at least one destination field. That means that whoever designed this query, let me go ahead and click OK, and right-click and open up in Design View, added the tables but didn't add the uh, fields from the table down below to be viewable in the Datasheet View. So if there's nothing viewable and you double-click to open it up in Datasheet View, it's going to go, uh, what do you want to see because I don't have anything down there in the grid. Let me go ahead and click and drag the split bar down, and you can see the two tables. Let me click and drag the bottom of the tables to stretch them open. Now if you have two tables that aren't related, and you know that if they're not related, that when we go ahead and pull the fields down below and try to view it, we get erroneous results. So one way, as we just learned, was to go ahead and click and drag part number to part number, but this one doesn't have a foreign key field in that table. Well, there might be another table out there that relates to this table and that table, a codependent, as it were, between mother and father, that can actually link them up through that table, because remember, these tables don't have to be directly related. They can be indirectly through another table. So if I go ahead and I right click here and I come down to show tables and let's double click on the book sales table. There we go. Close out and the book sales table relates to the book project and the uh, also relates to the customer and through that we're able to go ahead and pull up the fields we want from the book project and the customer. We don't have to include the book sales. We just need the book sales there to be able to communicate and see the relation between the two tables so we don't get erroneous results. So let's see, we can add the book title from the book project table and the customer name from the customer table. Again, we're going part number to part number, and then it looks like customer ID to customer ID. Let's go ahead and click on the Run button. It pulls it in. We don't get erroneous results. We got a total of 82 records. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.